Well, thank you. Uh, it's uh, a very difficult job to come up here after all those inspirational speakers and uh, come up with anything more to say. So I'll keep it relatively brief because uh, you're well represented uh, with your local uh, politicians and activists and they really are uh, an inspiration to me and to the whole of Australia. Um, first, you'd like to acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of this land, uh, their elders past and present and their ongoing life in the, the life of this place. I'd also like to acknowledge the organisers of this event and uh, the local community representatives. Um, I've got to come clean straight away. I am a politician. Uh, and, uh, but um, uh, not by design, uh, I grew up in Tasmania as a hippie kid, uh, strangely enough, um, and now here I am standing here in R.M. Williams' boots. So as, uh, I've come a long way, but I was compelled to become involved in politics because I saw the destruction, the wanton destruction of our natural estate, natural heritage, which was the uh, Tasmanian tall forest. The, uh, the disgrace of the wood chipping there. I saw multinational corporate in interests devastate regional communities, waste a resource, destroy ecology for no reason other than corporate greed. And that's exactly the situation we're seeing now with coal seam gas. It's the same model, just a different industry. And, and mark my words, Australia is watching the northern rivers. This fight here is being won, will be won, because it must be won here in the Northern Rivers. And I can tell you they've got their hands full here. There's no doubt about it. Um, thanks for the great introdu introduction, Paul. And that's true, I was elected only a year ago. The first thing I did when I was elected, I was given the mining portfolio. And someone said to me, I'd spent my time campaigning on food security, gold mining, um, uh, climate change, these issues. Someone said, you're going to have to get across coal seam gas. You better go up to Tara. And I said, coal seam gas, how big? it can't be a big problem, really. So I went to Tara and I was blown away. Immediately I flew over Tara and I saw those pictures that Wayne and Marion have put up there. I saw that uh, spider's web of pipelines, roads, uh, coal seam gas wells, compressor stations, uh, work camps, uh, ponds of polluted water, piles of salt. It was an apocalyptic industrialised landscape. And I thought, why are they doing that? Why are they doing that? And how could they possibly plan to do that across such a vast area of Australia? It must be stopped and we will stop it. There's no two ways about it. So that's what I've set myself to doing. So immediately, I, while I was in Tara, I watched ga Gaslands, um, and I said, right, there's, and there's no way that the, every, any politician in the New South Wales Parliament is going to escape this issue. So I bought a couple hundred copies of Gaslands, and I went around and I knocked on everyone's door, and I said, here's a letter. Here's a copy of Gaslands. You cannot get away with saying you haven't seen it and you don't know. Here's the letter that outlines the issues. You know. Um, uh, and I handed those to, your local, to Thomas George and other local MPs. I handed them all to them. And some of them said, yeah, I'll watch them. And as I've seen them around the parliament, I said, what did you think? And most of them have still got no idea. Most of them are dealing with that old paradigm, any industry is good industry, it's all about jobs. They don't understand what's at risk. Um, and so I said, well, let's get to the bottom of what's at risk. So I commissioned a coal seam gas inquiry and we had a hearing in Alstonville and Wayne, Marion, other local representatives gave compelling and powerful testimony there. We had 1,100 submissions. We had submissions from the CWA, the Nimbin Environment Centre, the New South Wales Farmers Association, councils, mums, dads, Aboriginal groups. We had submissions from everyone. That's who we had. We had the, the community turn up in a broad constituency and say, this industry does not have a social licence and we do not think it should have a social licence. And I, I think that is compelling and good news. 
Paul asked me to come here and give a bit of the political context uh, to, to explain what is actually happening in our parliaments with our policy makers because this industry doesn't have a social licence. The natural incl inclination of the Coalition and Labor is to allow it out there. They've let coal, gold, um, other big heavy industries, uh, uh, logging, they've uh, run rampant across our landscape uh, historically. We've, we've, we've seen that. Uh, their inclination is to allow this industry to, to, to roll out. And the links between cor big corporates and our politicians are very, very strong. We've seen the links with people like Richard Shields at Metgasco, Met with the Liberal Party. And that is pervasive. It's through all of the industry. John Anderson turning up at Eastern Star Gas. The links are there uh, behind closed doors. The government is facilitating this industry. What they're hoping is, as Wayne said, that we get tired, that the anger fades, that we go home. Well, that's not going to happen. Um, and one of the things that they're doing is they're setting up these policy frameworks. So the, the, the O'Farrell government's got the Strategic Regional Land Use Plan, which sounds fantastic. Um, but what it was supposed to do was rule coal seam gas out in large areas. We wanted them to rule, the Greens wanted them to rule it out everywhere. But they were saying we would rule it out in certain areas. Well now that's changed. It's a slow creeping death and a movement away from what they actually said. What they've now said is they're going to set up a gateway process which is double talk for everywhere is open for business, for coal seam gas, you just have to get through a gateway. And that gateway is that you grease the wheels, you make a promise about economic growth, and you hope that the community isn't watching. Well, the community is watching, and they are, they are alive to the real threats that this industry poses. So, uh, I'd like to also uh, like address um, the, the, the fundamentals of what this industry is saying. They're saying they're going to be good for jobs. They're saying that they're going to create thousands and thousands of jobs across New South Wales. Well, uh, the Australia Institute put out a research paper just recently that showed there's more jobs going to be created in managing the damage from this industry than the industry itself. <laughs> And that is the madness of this industry. In the Gunnedah Basin, there will be more jobs in bureaucrats going out there and talking to distraught farmers, in talking to um, communities who have been dislocated, than the actual in the industry itself. And what it's going to do is it's going to drive down employment in manufacturing, in agriculture, in services, in tourism. And that's what our politicians have to understand. We're a smart country. We don't need this industry. We should be investing in tourism, in our people and renewable energy. That's where the clean, green, job, jobs-rich future for Australia lies. That's what our politicians should and must do. Now, I'd like to finish on a positive note, and there can be no more uh, positive note than what Amelia and Wayne were talking about when they said a social movement, that this is a massive social movement. And it is actually, the front line of it is the Northern Rivers. Here is, is, it's a microcosm for the industry in Australia. If it falls over here, it is the first domino to fall. And the industry is absolutely terrified. They've probably got people in the room. There probably is people from ASIO in the room. Very, very, very scared. <laughs> I would be too. Um, they, they are terrified. We, as a politician, I give briefings. My office has been giving briefings to uh, merchant banks. Last week it was Citibank, before that it was PricewaterhouseCoopers, and we were telling them how big the lock the gate social movement around coal seam gas was. And they are issuing advice not to invest in this industry. And it's bloody good advice. So, as, as Amelia said, this is a social movement that is winning that has momentum, that has the ear of government. It's, um, it's compelling uh, to see so many people from a broad constituency, hippies, farmers, hippie farmer kids, all of them coming together 
Australians coming together saying no to coal seam gas, demanding politicians look further into the future for a, a future based on food security, renewable energy um, and healthy community. That's what it's about. That's what we'll fight for. That's what we'll win.